After many inquiries from our customers, we've finally done it. Color Cord Company has made a barn beam light fixture, and we're going to show you step by step how you at home can do this using our cloth covered electrical wire, DIY lamp parts, a junction box, steel brackets, and of course a big old slab of wood, which we picked up from a local lumber yard. First and foremost, let's brush this beam down, cleaning it up a bit to prep for a waxed paste finish. From here, we're routing out a section on the top of the beam so we can secure a junction box inside the beam. The result is a cleaner look with no J-Box sitting on top of the beam. Soon we will cover how to go about wiring our 14 pendants and how it will connect to your ceiling's J-Box. Now we are going to install our metal female barrel cord grips to the J-Box plate. Prior to this, we used a drill press and drilled out 15 holes in the J-Box plate and painted it black. The 15th hole will be your lead wire running up to your ceiling's J-Box and canopy. Next, it's time to wire up our 14 pendants. You will have to determine what lengths you need depending on your personal application, such as ceiling height, how many wraps per pendant you desire around the beam, as well as how far down you want your pendants to drop. With our DIY lamp parts, we decided to mix up our cord grip styles. So some pendants will have our metal female barrel cord grips, and some will use our three inch stem cord grips, both in a brushed nickel finish. Using our Color Cord 3000 or whatever wire stripping tool you have, strip one end of every pendant and pull off the PVC housing to expose the conductor wires underneath. Then strip the conductor wires using a standard wire stripper to expose the copper wires underneath. We recommend soldering the exposed ends in order to make a more secure connection to the socket terminal. Take your cord grip and optional socket cover and feed the cord through with the threads of the cord grip and the bottom of the socket cover facing the exposed wires. Do the same with your socket cap and loosen the ground screw to insert the green ground wire, then secure that ground wire with the ground screw. Next, take your socket terminal and loosen the terminal screws. Insert the black positive wire into the gold terminal and the white negative wire into the silver terminal. Secure these down with the terminal screw. Take the socket body and thread it onto the socket cap. A little disclaimer here, do not screw our black basic sockets together until they have been wired as they are self-locking and you will not be able to get it back open once completely threaded on. Lastly, slide the socket cover over the socket and thread the cord grip into the socket cap and tighten the cord grip set screw, which helps as a strain relief for the cloth covered wire. If you need further details on how to wire our sockets, we have several how-to videos available on our website and YouTube channel. After you've wired your pendants, you will need to strip the ends of the other side of the cord. We recommend exposing at least three to four inches of the conductor wire on this end to have plenty of room to work with when you twist all the conductor wires together to place inside the J-Box. Now we're going to unscrew all of our set screws from the metal barrel cord grips that we attached to the J-Box plate in order to easily feed our wires through. We also have extra standalone conductor wire that we will use to connect the first seven sets of conductor wires to the other seven, which will help keep the wiring clean instead of trying to wire all 15 positive, 15 negative, and 15 ground wires together and try to fit all those under three wire nuts. The last part of this step is to use heat shrink tubing to secure all of the conductor wires inside the wire nuts. Then secure the cloth covered wire in the J-Box plate with the set screws you removed earlier. 
Next, we cut down our steel to 16 and a half and eight and a quarter inch pieces to create our brackets that will be secured to the beam. These brackets will be mounted flush to the ceiling using toggle anchors. You'll need to assess the size of your beam to determine what size steel brackets you'll have to cut. We welded the two brackets and took a grinder to them to smooth the corners and prep for primer and paint, which we chose a matte black, but of course painting the brackets is optional. Now we have to measure one and a half inches from the outside on the smaller sides of the brackets to mark the spots where we will drill. One side will have larger holes for our bolts that will be drilled straight into the beam. The other holes will be for our toggle anchors that will go into the ceiling. Now that we've created the holes in the brackets, it's time to mount them to the beam. We drilled two holes eight inches from the outside of each side of the beam and then secured them with the bolts using a socket wrench. Even though we taped off the bolts to avoid scratching off the paint, we ended up having to mask off the beam and repaint the brackets and bolts. Now it's finally time to get the beam secured to the ceiling. Properly measure the distance from hole to hole and bracket to bracket and then drill the holes into the ceiling. In our circumstance we have to use toggle anchors, but it's always recommended to use studs or joists when possible as they are more reliable for mounting heavier fixtures. If those aren't an option, use anchors that are rated above the weight of the fixture. Install the toggle anchors in the top of the brackets, then you'll most likely need some more hands to get the beam lifted so you can insert those toggle anchors into the ceiling. Once you feel that they've butterflied out, tighten the anchors up with a power drill. The brackets and beam should be very secure, flush with the ceiling, and not shift around on the ceiling. Next, take the pendants and J-Box plate and mount it to the body of the junction box using the provided screws. All that's left to do at this point is wrap the pendants and wire your master power to your ceiling canopy. This next part is all about your personal design preference. Choose how you want your pendants to drop and how much overlap you want with your cloth covered electrical wire. It may take some time or even a couple tries to get it wrapped exactly how you prefer. Once you have your pendants wrapped the way you want them, your final step is to wire the lead wire to your canopy and J-Box. So we are not wiring this fixture to a J-Box because we are installing it in our photo studio, but all fixtures need to be mounted on an electrician installed J-Box. The concept is all the same. Your green ground wire will go to the J-Box ground wire, which is going to be a bare copper wire more often than not. Secure the wires with a wire nut and repeat this same step for your black positive and white negative wires. Mount the canopy back to the canopy bracket using the canopy screws. And if you're using one of our single port canopies, tighten down the set screw to secure the cloth covered electrical wire. If you have any further questions about the steps to making your own barn beam light fixture, feel free to reach out to us. We are more than happy to help. Or you can let us know how you went about making your own barn beam fixture. 